When I went to Hollywood a few years ago, I was outside of the, the Wax Museum, uh -huh. and they had a, a statue of Marilyn Monroe out there, leaning down as she was when she was like writing her name in the cement. And I have a picture of me sitting next to her, and I'm just like glancing over at her. And the moment, the my friend who took the, the photo captured the moment where I was just kind of like, I'm going to look like I'm looking at her, but then the beauty of this woman hit me and I became starstruck from a statue. Hmm. That's how beautiful that woman is. Welcome to Unboxing, friends. This is a satellite show. Welcome to the Basement. Today we open our very flat mail and we thank our donors. People go to welcometothebasementshow.com and contribute. People like these people. Michael, who writes, I've been watching the show ever since I was a freshman in high school and now I'm graduating from college. I hope you receive this donation as a thank you for all the laughs and knowledge you two have given me. Smiling happening. As am I. Smiling. Neil, Grace, Scott, Samuel, Brandon, The Factory Boys, Wilson, Malcolm, Benjamin, Kevin, Ferris, Michael, Dan, Alexander, Wayne, David, Christine, Mara, John, and Stephanie. We have more donors coming up later in the show, so stick around. Let's answer some viewer questions. Ian Bassalone. Do you do all of your musical listening on physical media like vinyl and CDs, or do you have Spotify or Pandora? I listen to vinyl. I listen to CDs in the car. Tona has a Pandora account. We listen to that. I must admit that I can't really wrap my head around Spotify and Pandora. I have a very pre-millennium mindset when it comes to listening and consuming music. And I don't think I'll ever shake that. Why should you shake that? I wonder if people coming up today know what it's like to listen to music without commercials. Oh, yeah. That is the beauty of the album, of just ha having your own physical music. And yes, Pandora has its place. And yes, I listen to a lot of music just off of YouTube, but it is not the same as just being able to sit down and listen to your music without a someone telling me I have to send away for food to cook at home or whatever the the ad is today actually i listen to quite a lot of music on youtube as well I, late at night i will often just want to hear a song and i'll listen to it and that will lead me on a mm -hmm. chain of songs you know so uh, uh, suddenly it's three in the morning i've listened to 25 hank williams songs or you know whatever this is a question from paul norden do you ever get depressed over the sheer amount of movies that exist not anymore. Uh, the, the key to it is figure out every single movie you want to see and watch them. And if you just keep at it, eventually you can get to a point where you're like, okay, I'm satisfied. Well, for me, movies are like bubbles. Like, they're just floating around down there. But every once in a while, one will float up and pop right in my face, and I'll say, I have to watch that movie right now. Yeah. And sometimes it'll be two or three bubbles at a time. But I never have this sense of, like, there's 20 movies I want to watch. I never have time. I can't watch them, you know? Oh, I didn't even do postcards. Postcards? Matt from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Dear Jabronis, congrats on 200 episodes. I'll miss you when you're gone. It's slightly ominous, but I know what you're referring to, so thanks, Matt. Look at that funny little guy. What an interesting hairstyle. We get to make it ourselves. It's one that you're supposed to draw the rest of it. Tyler, dear Matt and Craig, do you have any guilty pleasure movies? My guilty pleasure movies are the Resident Evil movies. I love them. Uh, we've talked about this fairly recently. I don't even remember what my answer was. I said Les Mis. Oh, okay. We talked about this very recently. Go check out like three episodes back. I think <laughs> you'll find our answer. Oh. Whoa. Ooh. Oh, I wish the cameras could have caught that. I wish I could have caught that. That majestic flight. I killed a bird. Uh, looks like a Japanese painting of a feudal mansion. Oh. This mansion is feudal. It's just never going to make it. Andrew from Daniels, New Jersey, Doherty. When the quarantine started, I thought you guys would stop filming. I'm glad to be proved wrong. Yes. And Sean Henry. Dear Matt Craig and Tona, random question as an excuse to send this card. What do you call the object pictured on the front? Tona, there's... A faucet. Faucet. I think it might technically be a spigot, but I would also call it a faucet. I call it a tap. I think that's actually the best answer, because tap covers both things. There you go. I do not have it tonight. We've got a letter from Spencer in Sheffield Village, Ohio. 
Spencer's a longtime fan, enjoys the show. Spencer's local library recently reopened for curbside pickup, and I was finally able to pick up a copy of Mildred Pierce that I'd placed on hold before they briefly shut down due to COVID-19. Mildred Pierce was the last live episode we did before the quarantine hit, until your Hunter from the Future. Both the film and your episode were well worth the wait. Oh, that's nice. Keep up the good work. Spencer also has a couple of questions. We are going to save those and add them to our questions list and answer them on a future show. Did you guys watch the Mildred Pierce miniseries? Yes. How was it? It's good. Same story, but longer? More about pie? Just more details. More lurid, definitely. It's very interesting. You should watch it. You and the wife would love it. Nice way to spend five and a half hours. <laughs> we also have an envelope here from Steve in Westfield, New Jersey. New Jersey is representing today. Yes. Matt Craig Tono and the gang. These are some things he's been meaning to send for a while. Postcards from his home front and a study abroad in Dublin late last year. One features a very young and very sexy James Earl Jones. <laughs> he was sexy when he was young. Oh! Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. He looks like Drake. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to keep this one. Okay, we got a monkey on the building. Ooh, Cannes International Film Festival. There you go. Can Kong. Dublin. The Hapenny Bridge. Doolin County Clare. Two of those. Same one. I'll keep that for myself. And just a nice picture of a field. Fields. <laughs> the basement What's wrong with is a guy? mess. <laughs> The next is an extra playbill I snagged just for you guys. I was extremely fortunate to see your favorite actor and mine, Michael Shannon, on The Great White Way last summer. This is Frankie and Johnny in the Claire de Lune. This is the play he was promoting in that fried chicken video. <laughs> yes. I bet you got to see Michael's little Shannon. Or big, I don't know. He's, oh, I, get... I, think, I think they're naked in this, oh, yeah. Okay. He says, Welcome to the basement. Always brought joy when there was pain, solace when there was doubt, and now movies when there are none. With love, Steve. Ben Nye, the makeup guy. When the Frisbee wait for me on the pier. Yes, sir. Frisbee, go to the pier, and then someone will send you back here to me. <laughs> but you can't come back until someone sends you Frisbee. It's just as easy to fall in love with a rich man as a poor man. But she yeah. says, yes, but... She's a terrible improviser. On a shore, let's fall, on a shore. I am not kidding around. Stop singing all songs. If you have a production number <laughs> going on, you need to wrap it up. Money is rather a hobby of Lorelai's. Someday, some fellow will make an honest girl out of Lorelai, and she will change her name to Laura Truth. <laughs> Piggy was being the python, and I was a goat. Greatest of all time? The goat? Because once in a while, even a mercenary nitwit like you has a decent impulse. Mercenary nitwit is a spy spoof I've been working on <laughs> off and on throughout the years. When love goes wrong. Now see, this is the era when you hear a song like this, you know the title is When Love Goes Wrong. It's not all this weird Bob Dylan stuff. <laughs> Rainy day women. No, no, no. Uh, The title of this song, maybe. Black Star, Ross Gorham. Talk to me, Harry Winston. Tell me all about it. Me. Ladies and gentlemen, Harry Winston. Uh, hello. <laughs> Neil and Dustin Diamonds. Best friend. And if you're on a budget, Cubic Zirconia can be a fairly decent friend. To swear to tell the truth. The old truth, nothing but the truth. Not your Lord of Lies. Bye. Let's open some packages. All right. This is from Aaron in Hell's Kitchen, who says, Damn thee, Poseidon, where be my scrimps? That's a little shout out to Beer and Board Games. Ah, this is from Michael in Orlando, Florida. When I went to Orlando on spring break, we went to an arena football game. And it All was... right, there's so many things here <laughs> I didn't know about you. First said you would go to Florida for spring break, and then the whole football thing. And arena football. Go on, man. Uh, but the team was the Orlando Thunder. Yes. And during the game, they said Orlando Thunder about 150 times. <laughs> I went with football fans. Yeah. Michael here has made a mock-up of what the season one DVD box of our show would look like. 
Wow. It's pictures of us from our Halloween episode, Matt wanting his opera house, and me being the creepy guy from Lost Highway. Ernesto drawn on the bottom with a quote from Barry Boswick saying, I do the finger thing. <laughs> Matt Sloan is a man who has not seen movies. Craig Johnson is a different man who may or may not have seen movies. Is how it starts. Dear Matt Craig and Tona, I've been re-watching all the episodes of Welcome to the Basement as a way of staying sane during this pandemic. And I was inspired to make this fake DVD cover. I hope you enjoy it. We do. Thank you. Thank you for continuing to make this show as great as it is and keep up the good work. Wonderful job, Michael. From Aaron at Hell's Kitchen. An envelope for you and an envelope for me. Okay, we play this game again. Here's round four of Have They or Have They Not Appeared on Welcome to the Basement. Are you going to throw things at me? Yes. William Powell. I don't think it's happened yet, but we've had Warner Baxter twice, and they look very similar. <laughs> George Brent! Yes! Yes! Yes, he has! James Cagney! Not yet. Someday. Veronica Lake! Cue tiger noise! You know, you can just dub in an actual tiger. You, you, you can't see my mouth. George Saunders! No! Hoity toity man. Yeah, have yes, not happened. We yet. have not had George Saunders on the show. Ronald Coleman, nope. Nope. Who also has a voice like that. Cesar Romero, nope. The Joker. Ginger Rogers, twice. Yes. Oh, of course, Ray Milland has appeared on our show more often than any other actor. <laughs> Possibly because of this. <laughs> Craig, I would imagine that you and Matt and many of the Welcome to the Basement fans have been using this quarantine time to catch up on movie viewing. Oddly enough, I haven't been. But also it's because I have to go to bed like 9 o'clock at night because I have a newborn kid. I would be interested in both of yours and the viewers in the comment section favorites so far of the quarantine period. I can't call that to mind. I know right when quarantine began, I watched The Shawshank Redemption because it seemed appropriate. Here are my top five. To Catch a Thief, The Ghost and Mrs. Muir, Parasite, My Neighbor Totoro, and Sexy Beast. These are movies he's caught up on since... I know, but... I've heard that list before. I think Aaron might have sent us that list before. Why would he send us a letter about quarantine? I don't know, but that combination of movies is familiar to me. I remember it ending with Sexy Beast. Par that Parasite was in there somewhere. You, you dreamed it, Matt. I didn't dream it. He also sends this 3D postcard of various Alfred Hitchcock movies. I did not get a chance to listen to a record. I apologize for that. I'd like to talk about that Blondie record back there, but I know Blondie's music really well, but I don't know her catalog, so I don't even know what songs are on there. I will listen to a record next time. I think it's going to be that Lord Huron Strange Journeys record, because I really want to listen to that. So that's what I'm going to talk about next time. This is my vow. The rest of our donors, Marie, Mario, William, Jennifer, Eric, Ashton, Anne, Zach, Tiffany, James, Mora, Andrea, Philip, Robert, Amber, Melanie, Grant, Greg, Ine, Goods and Services. Abigail, Cole, Elizabeth, Crafty Fandom, Graham, William, Adam, and Nathan. I like it when businesses support our show. You should go check them out. You just Google them. Ene, Goods and Services, E-N-A-Y, Crafty Fandom. And then I just remembered the Factory Boys. They were on Beer and Board Games a long time ago. And they're an improv group. Oh! The Factory Boys of Improv, they're called. And oh. I, I referred to them as the Fancy Bastards of Improv. Because <laughs> I forgot their name. This is from... Sean in Victoria, British Columbia. This is from I don't know who. Dad's Old Fashioned Cream Soda Zero Sugar Drink Mix. Hmm. I don't know if I've ever had cream soda. The name weirds me out. This is probably based on a comment that I made in Welcome to the Basement that I'm not going to make again here, but uh, thank you for this. <laughs> a card with rocks on it. Dear Matt, Craig, and Tona, a little West Coast Canadian content for you. Sorry they're not LPs. We're all of the same vintage, and thanks to CanCon laws for radio and TV, stuff like Chilliwack and Doug and the Slugs was inescapable in my childhood. Enjoy a taste of BC AM Radio circa 1983. For those of you who don't know, uh, CanCon laws is Canadian content, I believe is what it means, where in Canada they have to have a certain percentage of programming be Canadian, or else they'll just become American. Right. Chilliwack and... Slugcology 101. That would be Doug and the Slugs. Doug and the Slugs. And right. Chilliwack! There's a song called California Girl. Suspect. Chilliwack sounds like a competitive chili cook-off. 
Well, Doug and the Slugs sound like your brother's friend's band yeah. who's insistent on playing at your party. Now is the time in the show when I recommend an episode from our back catalog for you to watch or rewatch. I am going to recommend seven episodes. It is the quarantine episodes that we recorded here in the basement remotely via Zoom. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because... Those episodes didn't get a lot of views, and I saw several comments of people saying when you guys went remote, I'd stop watching your show, which kind of irritates me a little, I got to admit, because we had to work extra hard to make those episodes. <laughs> Craig in his situation, and then me in the, you know, the editing part. So if you watch this show, don't skip an episode, because they're <laughs> always going to be entertaining. I'm sorry I'm getting a little miffed. I'm letting it go. Also, there is a clue in every episode, and when we solve the mystery during our final episode, it won't make sense if you don't watch the Hairspray episode first. At the end of this video, I have a playlist of all seven of those episodes. You can just watch them all in a whack. Chilly whack or otherwise. Please, if you haven't seen them, check them out, because they are our show. So click on that link at the end of the episode, and now take a look at this. I'll be in my room alone Every post-meridian What rhymes with post-meridian, I want to find out? By Mr. Quotidian. <laughs>